In the next set of 10 problems, 11 through 20, it says to write each algebraic expression as a verbal phrase. So we're going to use words in order to write each one of these algebraic expressions. So on each one of them, there's going to be lots of different variations that you can use. So I'm just going to kind of talk through some of them. I'm not going to write anything down on the paper for this video, but we're just going to talk through them. So the first one, we have something like a number plus 8. So you could say the sum of a number and 8. Or you could say 8 more than a number. Or you could say a number increased by 8. So lots of choices on that one. So number 12, it looks like we have 9b squared. So we could say something like the product of 9 and a number squared. That probably would be the best one. Or 9 times a, a number squared. Something like that would be good. Number 13 is 10c minus 7. So you could say the difference, because that connects all of these things together. The difference of, and it's the difference of, the product of 10 in a number and 7. Or you could say 7 less than the product of 10 in a number. Or you could say the product of 10 in a number decreased by 7. All three of those would be good. 14 looks like the quantity d minus 2 all over 5. So the whole thing that connects them is, is quotient, right? Because this is a big division problem. you got this stuff up here being divided by the 5 down here. So you could say the quotient of the difference of a number in 2 and 5. That would probably be the best one for that guy. Or you could say the difference of a number in 2 divided by 5. But probably you'd have to put a comma or something because that might be a little ambiguous as to what's being divided by 5, whether it's just the 2 or whether it's the d minus 2. So probably the best one is the quotient of the difference of a number in 2 and 5. So number 15 looks like kind of like the distributed property that needs to be done on this guy, but we're going to write it in, a, in verbal form just the way that it is. So you have the product of, and that's what connects all of these, so we're timesing 7 by this business, so we could say the product of 7 and the sum of a number in 3, something like that, or 7 times the sum of a number in 3. Either one of those would be good. 16 has g cubed minus g squared, so we could say the cube of a number minus the square of the same number, and since they are both g's, it's going to be the same value that we're going to plug in, so you need to indicate that it's the same. So g cubed minus g squared would be a number cubed minus the same number squared. Or you could say the cube of a number minus the square of the same number, something like that. 17, you've got this h minus 1 quantity times the h plus 1 quantity. So you could say the product of because the product is going to connect these things because it's this times this. So the product of the difference of a number in 1 and the sum of a number in 1. And that's probably the best way to, to go about doing that one. So 18 you have 7 divided by j. So you could say the quotient of 7 and j. Or just like I said, 7 divided by j. That would work as well. Number 19 is 7m plus 8n. So you could say the sum of, because that's adding and that's going to connect these two terms. The sum of 7 times a number and 8 times a different number. And you might need to say different because the m and the n are different variables. So there are different quantities being represented there. Or you could say the sum of the product of 7 in a number and the product of 8 in a different number. Something like that would be good. Or you could even get by with saying 7 times a number increased by 8 times another number. That would work. So number 20 is the last one here, and we have n being divided by n plus 5. So since these n's are the same variable, we'll need to indicate that. So we could say the quotient of a number and the, the same number increased by 5, something like that. Or you could say the quotient of n and the sum of n and 5, something like that. So for all these 10 problems, there are multiple ways to 
put these algebraic expressions into verbal phrases. So you just kind of need to pick something that feels comfortable and just go with it. So that completes these 10 problems.